and we are here with Mara Kiesling, who is Executive Director of the National Center for Transgender Equality. Uh, Mara, are you with us? I sure am. Good, uh, good afternoon. I was going to say good morning, but it's not that. Well, we won't uh, we won't grade you on your timekeeping. How's that? <laughs> Good. Uh, uh, Good. Thank you so much for being with us, Mara, because there are you're doing very important work over there at the Center for Transgender and Equality, and this has been quite a few weeks for and quite a week for uh, transgender news, transgender issues in the news, and I wanted, if I may, to just get your thoughts on a couple of those. Um, Absolutely. First of well, the first issue I wanted to ask you about was the prison experience of uh, C.C. McDonald, who is a transgendered woman who was imprisoned as a man, treated as a man in my understanding, uh, in a humiliating sort of way. I think she handled herself with enormous pride and self-respect. Here's what struck me, but she was imprisoned in a man's prison, and the experience of being a woman in that environment must have been horrifying at times, extremely stressful. Here's the thing that struck me about the C.C. McDonald case, first of all, and I wanted to get your, your instance on it, and researching a very different story, which was fundamentalism in Iran. I saw that the Ayatollah Sistani acknowledges transgendered people as a legitimate part of society. So imagine a fundamentalist society that executes gay people can acknowledge that transgendered people are who they are. Uh, I know there's an anecdote about President George W. Bush uh, acknowledging a transgendered classmate as who she became. Why is it that the system which is described as the American justice system seems to have so much difficulty recognizing the legitimacy of a transgendered life? Um, well, that's a really good um, question. So, uh, I mean, a couple of things I, I want to be clear about. Um, so I, do, I don't speak for Cece, um, who is just this amazingly brave and wonderful person. But what I will say is I think people are surprised sometimes. Uh, it's not as cut and dry as all trans women should be in women's prisons. Um, a lot of trans women actually ask to be in men's prisons, and I do not know if CC did or not. But okay. there are a lot of reasons. Uh, you know, prisons are, American prisons and probably all prisons, are just horrible places that, that are just unconscionably inhumane in almost every way. And for a lot of folks, being in the men's prison is something that just feels a little safer to them for whatever reason. Maybe they know some of the people there. Maybe it's the devil they know um, in terms of, you know, the institution. Um, um, maybe, so for, for whatever reason. So we don't begrudge trans women who do request to be put in, in the male prisons. Um, the, the, the bigger problem, and, and that's a big problem when, when people are forced to be in the wrong prison, so I don't want to belittle that, but I think to understand what happened to C.C. McDonald is actually an important lesson in the overall American criminal justice system. So she and, and three of her friends, who were all young, queer, um, black people, were just walking down the street when um, a man who later turned out to have been uh, a white supremacist with a swastika tattooed on his chest started disrespecting them, harassing them, and menacing them. Um, that would not have happened if they weren't young queer trans people or young queer black people. Because in this country, all three of those kinds of people, young people, trans people, queer people, and black people are all disrespected. A woman stabbed Cece in the face with a drinking glass, pierced her cheek, and Cece fled but happened to have scissors on her because she was a fashion student. And in an ensuing chase, the, the uh, initial uh, antagonist was stabbed by C.C. Scissors, but because C.C. was a young, black, queer person, she was attacked. She was the only one who was arrested at the time. She was prosecuted, and she was incarcerated. None of those things would have happened to her if she wasn't, if she wasn't those things. And, and there wouldn't have been a question about where to house her safely. Um, so... 
Uh, uh, so, so let me just jump jump in for a second. So, in a, a sense, I appreciate first of all the the clarification and the correction that Cece would not have been in the criminal justice system had she not been a member of, in in her case, several minorities that get unjust treatment in the courts and in society. And, and, and I take that correction. I mean, I do believe that Cece herself said something to the effect of the prison experience was designed to humiliate her as a trans woman. And I, I wrongly perhaps inferred that being in a male prison was part of that attempt that she described. But um, I take the correction yeah. to heart. Oh, and and may I would well, ask it may you, have been. So I, I just don't want to I don't want to speak for CC specifically. Um, you know, sure. that's, CC's out now and can speak for herself. So I leave that to her. And 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 the male prison thing may have been a big part of CC's problem. So I, I want to be clear about that. I just I just wanted to point out that that's something that people get people are surprised about sometimes. That sometimes trans women um, do make that request. Um, but you know, jails and prisons are horrible for trans people. Um, trans people just standardly are put in solitary confinement because the jailer will say, well, we can't put them in with the men because they'll be raped, and we can't put them in with the women because they'll rape the women, which is an absolutely absurd thing. So they disrespect trans people in that way, and what they do is they put them in solitary confinement often for their entire stay, which can be months or years, and it's torture, and it is because they are, they are trans. Um, and I, I don't know about CC's solitary confinement. She was briefly, um, the jail euphemistically call it administrative segregation, which, you know, doesn't make it sound as bad as, as the torture that it is. Well, you know, Mara, as I listen to you, I think, you know, I, I am constantly trying to think, as I know you are in your work, um, constantly trying to think about, okay, how can we make this better? How can we solve this? And one of the things I'm struggling with is that this feels to me like a multi-dimensional problem because you have the problem of yeah. the injustice of the jail system, the court system, the prison system, the lack of accountability, the power that people in these systems have over individuals in their lives, but you also have the cultural unawareness of what it means to be a transgendered person, so that much of this is a kind of blind bigotry where, for all we know, they think they're doing the right thing because they don't understand what it means to be transgendered. So right. what do we do? How do we help make this situation better from the moment of arrest, which it sounds like never should have happened in this ca particular case, but getting away from the particulars, how do we make the police system, the court system, and the prison system more responsive to the issue of transgendered rights? Well, um, coincidentally... Good question, uh, I know. <laughs> early next week, we're issuing a publication written by our policy director, Harper Jean Tobin, and uh, another trans man, uh, Jody Marksmer in California, on how local activists can advocate for prison and jail policies that are safer for trans people, but at the same time also, and this is so important, be advocating for a total reform of the criminal justice system. Um, I think people are now understanding and having a public conversation for the first time about how inherently racist the system is, how inherently inhumane it is, um, and how needlessly expensive it is. Um, you know, all these folks who are, you know, in jail, primarily people of color, um, for smoking pot. And they can be in jail for decades, you know, over something so minor. So we're issuing a publication and hoping to get, hoping to get activists all over the country to real, really step up and do specific education in jails and prisons and in police departments, um, to make sure that these folks do understand, um, who trans people are. Um, um, and, and what kind of policies make sense from a humane point of view, but also from a very practical point of view of the, of the prison system. Um, you know, I, I think they don't want things to be as bad as they are. Um, and, you know, legislatures shouldn't want things to be as bad as they are. 
And then if I could just point out one other really cool thing that's happening, there's a little agency sure. in the Department of Justice, the U.S. Department of Justice, called the... Um, God, I just, I just missed it. Oh, Community Relations Service. And this is a little agency that was set up when the 1964 Civil Rights Act was passed. And what they do is um, they interact with local communities when there is maybe a church burning, and they try to facilitate between the police and the community and other parts of the community. And they have uh, just uh, about completed a really wonderful training module that they're hoping to distribute to all police departments in the country. And it's specifically about transgender people, how to treat them respectfully, how to overlook your biases and prejudices against them. And so I think the education is stepping up, and that's going to help a lot. Well, that is good news. And, you know, it, it just points to the fact that <clears throat> that any of our prejudices, or any member of society, each of us maybe is, is trained to have one form of prejudice or another at some point in our lives, but it's the overcoming of those prejudices that in the end becomes the human mission, the societal mission, the national mission, the cultural mission. So if some of the terrible experiences of uh, C.C. McDonald and others can lead to that, I hope that's some small comfort to them. Uh, Mara, Kess Mara Kiesling, thanks so much for being with us. Mara is You're welcome. the executive director of the National Center for Transgender Equality. Um, I hope you'll come back and speak with us again. I'd love to. Thanks so thanks. much for having me. You bet. This is RJ Eskow, and we'll be back after this break with Take Action News.